Welcome to Museum Roadshow. I'm Amy Deggerstrom, the director here at the Becker County Museum. And the museum hosts brown bag lunches every month, uh, the second Wednesday of each month at noon. And most recently, we talked to uh, Edgar Ewalls, who was a longtime employee of Bell Telephone. And he gave us a little bit of history of the telephone in Becker County. So let's take a listen to Edgar uh, and see what he has to say. I went to work for Northwestern Bell in 1950. And uh, at that point in time, uh, there was only one major person in the telephone company, and it was Ted Fark. And he ran basically Northwestern Bell here in Detroit Lakes. Uh, he, they had a switchboard with operators at it, and he had the business office with the clerks that were selling telephone service. Uh, at that point in time, Detroit Lakes was minimal in size. And uh, I don't know what type of telephone service was prior to that. I don't, re I don't have any information and I didn't look it up. <coughs> but anyway, that was a development period. And uh, the telephone people that were working here at that time was uh, started out with only a couple people outside. If they needed a pole set, they lifted it and put it on top of the truck, and then they hauled it out to wherever, and then had to dig a hole and put it in the ground, and then they put string the telephone wire to the house and hook it up. And uh, in that 1950, then they were developing the telephone system all over the United States because of uh, prior to that point, there was uh, demand for a lot of the metals that were needed for the war in this here. So on the first line crew I joined, just about everybody had been in the Second World War. And so they were starting, some of them were starting their telephone careers at that time too. So anyway, we started here and uh, we started putting cable in the ground and setting telephone poles. And Ted Fark would go out and find out in some of these areas if these people wanted phone service. Because the town was only, I don't know if you are acquainted with the town, but West Avenue was the extremity of Detroit Lakes on the west side. And on the north, north side of town was would be in like Highway 34. And the east side of town would be kind of like on Madison Avenue. That was basically, and then down to the lake uh, was basically Detroit Lakes. So in that small area, uh, most of the telephone service was business. They had the major portion of that. Then later on, it was added a few more people had their residential service. And, but most of the places uh, couldn't afford a private line or a two-party. So most of them in town really had a four-party service. And later, later on, that kind of changed a little bit. And then the city uh, really didn't expand very much, but there were some other homes that were built close by, so they contacted them to see if they wanted phone service. So some of those that were beyond that limit I gave you to begin with, uh, they had eight party lines, like rural. Uh, also in the rural area here at that point in time was uh, farmer lines. We called them farmer lines, and some of them were called service lines. The farmer lines were just the farmers themselves. They were in a area of where the farmers all lived, so they could communicate between each other without having to drive any distance with the horses or have to walk, because there wasn't that many vehicles around at that point in time. Some of them were closer to the city park here, so they had a situation where the telephone line would come into the city 
and then they would be connected to the switchboard of the telephone company. And uh, that was uh, when I first came to speak today, they told me that they had a, a switchboard and I wanted to find out right away if it was the telephone operators and because I was under the impression at one point in time that the museum had gotten one of these. Uh, right now they don't have one. But the switchboard that they got brought over here was in the Grayson Hotel in Detroit Lakes. And uh, when I was first working for the telephone company, uh, the Grayson Hotel was one of the big hotels. So they had a lot of rooms. So basically then they got into what uh, we call or they call uh, a PBX. That's just like, you know, they got all kinds of th names, ACT and all of these here, AT&T, you know, if you don't know what it really stands for. But it's a <coughs> private branch exchange is what it's called. So they get their dial tone or they get their telephone service comes into the hotel and then in order to not have to run to every room or do all this transaction type of thing, they can just use their switchboard and call that room and talk to the customer or uh, if the customer calls the switchboard, then they can give them an outside line. The only ones that I knew of when I first started working was uh, Grayston Hotel, the Proctor Hotel, and the Edgewater Beach Resort there was the only ones that had a uh, major switchboard and the hospital. <clears throat> Some of those afterwards d developed into a bigger system, but that's basically the start with. And um, most of the resorts along the lake all had a business phone and uh, some of them were only during the summer tourist season and then some of them later on built homes there with their cabins and they lived there the year round. Thanks for joining us on Museum Roadshow today. Uh, come back next week to hear more from Edgar all about the telephone companies here in Becker County. Mm -hmm.